everybody else can just kind of come in um, as they have the opportunity to. Um, so I will say I would like as much participation as possible. Um, I know last week Kari said uh, read Romans. Um, I kind of deviated from that a little bit just because something hit me in my spirit with everything that's kind of going on um, in the world, especially um, within the last week and stuff. Um, so tonight we're actually going to be talking about racism, inequality, injustice, um, but, you know, taking some scripture and using the Bible since this is supposed to be kind of like a, a Bible study thing because we do want to make sure we are in line with what God's word says and just kind of get some ideas of what his word says about those types of things and how we're supposed to handle them and that kind of stuff. And I have to say, things were coming at me like in all different directions. So if it seems I'm all over the place, it's because I am, it doesn't seem that way. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and um, just make sure everybody can hear me, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. So I'm um, gonna go ahead and start by praying. Um, Lord, we wanna just come to you right now saying thank you. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. And thank you for the opportunity to um, come together again right now, Lord, and just lift your name up. Lord, we come to you asking that our hearts and our minds be open right now to receive your word, Lord. Let us learn something that we can apply in our daily lives. Um, let your word be able to be seen upon us in our daily lives so that we may live as an example so someone else will see you in us and call out and cry out to you as their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Um, so as I stated tonight, the topic is kind of racism, equality, and all that kind of stuff. Um, please, please participate. Um, I hate the fact right now I can't see none of y'all. Like, I just see L and B and all that on the screen and stuff like that. But that's fine if you're not comfortable. I'm not either. But um, so everybody is aware of the situation. Um, of George Floyd, his life, Floyd, his life being taken, I believe, on last Monday in Minneapolis, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. Um, racism and equality has been around forever. Uh, racism is a word that honestly is a modern word because I mean it's not something that I know of that was ever spoken about in the Bible um is that does anybody know something I don't know or can they share any information I mean is the word race ever even used in the Bible The only thing that I know of as far as the Bible is there are certain classifications and stuff like that in the Bible that I read, but it's basically not pertaining to, to physical features or anything. You know, you had Israel and the nations. You had Jew, you had Gentile. You had righteous, you had unrighteous. Um, the only classifications are really when it came to religious identity. You know, it wasn't black, it wasn't white or brown or this, that, whatever. Um, you even had like classes of people. I mean, you had slaves, you had servants and stuff like that. But most of the time, servants or slaves were, that, that was those people that were basically paying their debts. They didn't have the money, so they paid debts. It wasn't like how we think of it right now. But i um, gonna kind of back up looked up a definition, race. Uh, it says the idea that human species is divided into groups on the basis of physical differences. Uh, well, as far as me and when it comes to the Bible and what I read, and please chime in at any time, 
the Bible to me only talks about one race and that's the human race as far as as I know. I mean, it, and I'm no Bible scholar, so I'm sure some of you have probably read over and are well versed in the Bible more so than I am. So, you know, um, jump in at any point, but it talks about us as a, a, a human race. But all the stuff that we see going on in the news right now, um, one question that I have for you all is, why is race such a stumbling block for this nation? Why is it a stumbling block? You know, why? Um, I feel like it's just a stumbling block because people choose to turn the blind eye like they choose not to see it it's still prevalent and it's still it still exists but people certain people choose to turn the other way to not really look at it you know what i'm saying or and address it like they think and the reason why i say this is i i actually just got off the phone with um one of my caucasian friends and uh, a co-worker and she was talking about the situation and I just said a little stiff because the type of job I'm in, I I don't say a lot, and especially talking with a coworker sometimes, you kind of tread lightly. Um, and I haven't said like my spiel on social media either because of my job, basically. Um, but my SOR officer at our school is black, and so. Predominantly, I'm at a white school pretty much as far as like staff. Um, so she was saying, my principal was saying that she thought racism was better. And I wasn't there for the conversation, but she was just saying like what the police officer said that no, like it's still present. It's not, it's not better than what it was. Like it's still there. But seeing as though she said that it's better or thought that it's better, that means she chose to just turn the blind eye and just not deal with it. So I think that's the biggest thing. Like people have just chose not to deal with it and they think it don't exist as much as it did back during the day of Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and Harry Tubman, all those things, but it does still exist. They just choose not to see it and they choose not to address it. Right. Well, and and I can agree with you on that, too. And it's like I was saying earlier, racism and race has been around for over 400 years now. And it's a sin. You know, we talked about when we were talking about David and generational sins and stuff like that. That's one of the things that, in my opinion, it is a sin and it is generational. It is deeply embedded in people. And it's one of those things that if it's something that has happened and transpired over 400 years, it's not going to change overnight. Um, you know, it goes back to colonial times because basically what happened was one race saw themselves as inferior over another race. That's what happened. And it's something that's been passed down from generation to generation. And it also ties back in because we talked about how your your decisions to do or not do something affect people, include you and others. And to me, racism is one of those things that is that is a sin that was a choice. Um, it's not something to me by design and God's plan from reading his word, but it, it's a choice. It's a sin that has been passed down from generation to generation. It has not only affected um, the people who who decided to create these hierarchies and stuff like that as far as races go. And the whole community is affected. You look out right now, people burning buildings, this, that, whatever. That doesn't just affect them. It affects everybody. But race is a stumbling block. And I feel like it's probably going to continue to be unless we do something different. But I guess is it something that we can truly overcome? 
I mean, I feel like it doesn't matter what kind of law or what kind of legislature you try to enact, uh, you're still going to have, you're still going to have um, inequality there because law and legislation, and I had this written somewhere to refer back to because I actually heard somebody say it this way. Um, where is it at? It says that you cannot legislate how another group feels about another group. You cannot legislate in a way that will make people like each other but you can what you can do is let's legislate in such a way as to limit the kind of harm uh dislike can do to populations and that's true because i feel like at the end of the day most importantly people's hearts have to be changed so that their mindsets can change and only god can do that so i feel like we have to live the way that we have to live according to god's word so that people see us so that we can possibly be a light, so to say, for some people. Because I mean, you got people out there that are racist, have been racist, grew up racist and all that kind of stuff. And then they've made these changes or what have you. And I feel like basically one of the world's problem is the human heart. You have to be able to, to reconcile your heart, so to say, and let your heart change in order to be a better person and not see people based off color because, I mean, it's not fair. I mean, God says that we're all equal in his eye. None of us are any better, and he didn't cre create us th that way. And, I mean, there's several scriptures um, that refer to us as being one race, um, and that's the human race, like I said earlier. Um, it, it's it's, I mean, there's just so many different scriptures in the Bible that want us to be together. And I really don't get and understand how we are so divided. But at the same time, as we sit here and talk, the same Bible that we talk about as being uplifting and being one people and getting along, other people use the Bible to divide. I mean, it's, it's one of those premises of you open up the book of Genesis. Well, you got some people that read, you know, there was light and there was dark, and then they try to they try to make races inferior based off that. Well, light, you know, is good, dark is bad. There's so many things, you know, in there. And it's been said, and I read this somewhere too, that, you know. The Bible was used as a means of oppression and to justify slavery by some people, which is true, because if you go back to those times before our forefathers and stuff, they basically had a Bible that wasn't the full Bible. They read the Bible to them, but they only read those scriptures and stuff that applied to, you know, a servant serving their master and all that kind of stuff, you know, and then later on, they were able to get a hold of an actual Bible to read the Bible in its entirety. And that same Bible that had oppressed them was the Bible that they used that they read to uplift them and liberate them from slavery. Um, and what I want to know in all of this, what role or does the role, does the church play a role in seeking equality and justice in society? How do you feel about that? Hey, Leslie, what's up? Hi. Yeah, um, before I go into work, I was going to, um, I, I finally got parts, and I was going to back up and answer your question also when you was asking about racism in the Bible. Uh, not really answer it, but just give my comment on it. And um, I think you was asking, like, is racism in the Bible? How, how, what do we reference it to? And um, when I read stories of, you know, when the Egyptians had, the, you know, the children in slavery, and they had a classism where they were better than them, so they worked for them. Or even if you go into a store when Paul and Peter, they were sitting and they were eating. And um, I think it, um, Peter, he had gotten up from the table sitting with Gentiles because the Jews were looking at him funny. So he was, you know, getting insecure about that. That was a, um, a form of, the Bible shows us how 
people use those classisms or racisms, even in the Bible, social issues where Paul had to check Peter and tell him, look, um, the Jews and the Gentiles, we can't, we can't do this. We're the leaders. We have to be the ones who are progressive and proactive as far as bringing us together because we were brought to not only preach the word to the Jews, but also to the Gentiles. So it's just like little stories like that where I can kind of see where um, the 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 birth of racism or the birth of just that hatred and that sin was always there. It started showing itself more and more as we kind of study the word. And even if you go back and before, like like we said, racism was a sin. When at when Adam, I'm not Adam, on when I'm Cain and Abel, like you know, God God would appreciate and love the things that um that one brother did, but the other brother, his was not taken, so he got jealous. And it just kind of comes down to us and the hate in the heart, in our hearts, or the love in our heart. So it's just little stories like that in the Bible that kind of shows us how um this how far racism has came and how it's progressed and how the devil just constantly used that to divide us and and he just and he confuses and, and wraps it up in different forms prejudice and racism are two different things some mm-hmm. people don't some people don't understand the difference in those so he uses right. that to trip us up so it's just so many things that that the the word of god it shows us and it lets us know there's nothing new under the sun we've always been taught that but we, it's hard for us to decode it sometimes. And even for me, it's like, God, what are we doing right now? Like, people out here destroying stuff. People out here questioning what people are doing. Like, I, I want justice, but not like this. But when right. God sent the plagues, it wasn't no nice plagues. It wasn't no, like, hey, guys, come on, let my people go. No, it was plagues that it, it destroyed crops. It, 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 it uprooted their whole world. It killed children. You know, so... I can't sit here and be like, God doesn't want this and God, no, God's in control of all this. So just moving forward, we just have to really, really, this is like a test. Like we say we Christians and even the word Christian is a newer word from the Bible. You didn't see Christian, the word Christian in the Bible that much, but we followers of Christ. Um, now we're going to put our pants on and show it now. Like, and, that, and all we're really showing is that we're just following God. We don't have the answers, but we want to be a part of his solution. And I agree with that. And I think it has to start with us as individuals. You know, and I posed the question last, like, does the does the church, do you feel like the church plays a role in that? Or, you know, because I think back and I can't speak because I didn't live during that time frame, but I think back to like MLK and stuff, you know, it, it appears and seems to me that churches played a bigger role then as they do now. Um, that's just my opinion. Like I said, I don't know because I didn't live back then. And I don't know what different churches or different pastors individually go and do what kind of workshops or what kind of people they meet with and stuff. But that just made me question that because, you know, I I mean, it's not for me to sit in judgment what people are doing out there because I'm not the one doing it. But I don't agree with burning cities down. I don't agree with the face and buildings, this, that, whatever, because it's personally to me, it's stupid. Um, we, you've done that over and over, over and over again. And for what good? Cause we back in the same place. So if it didn't do that then, well, how are you expecting it to do anything now? Me personally, you hit people in their pocketbooks, but you know, I think sometimes we don't want to do that. There's, there's diversity and inclusion reports for every business that's out there. Get your hands on one of those. See if people that look like us are on these people's corporate boards. See if they're hiring us. If they don't look like they're hiring us or they don't have us on boards or in decision-making positions, then why are we doing doing business with them? That's the way to hurt them. That's the way to hopefully get things to possibly change because at the the end of the day, to me, the way it seems anyway, even with this coronavirus, everything reverts back to money and the economy. So that is the only way that we seem to be able to get any attention or anything like that. Facebook. Facebook's been in the news for two years straight because Facebook does not have good diversity and inclusion policies, yet we all up on it all the time. It's those type of things. Step away. Step away. They want our business. They want our money and stuff like that. But yet you don't want to make the le- the the playing field level for for us, so to say. But again, I revert back to the question: What if any role does the church have to play 
in this. Um, I would say I personally think, and not even just about this George Floyd situation. That's that's my mindset. I do know that's definitely the topic at hand. It's the issue. It's all in the media. And the situation was not right at all. But the church, I think, personally should play a big role. And not even just this, but just the the whole thing is like the church is fearful nowadays of deep, honest conversations. Whether it's about racism, inequality that's against us, um, sexual abuse. Those are issues that the church does not address. Like, and those are topics that need to be addressed in the church. I agree with you. And I, so I feel like the church definitely plays a bigger role than what they do, but I think they don't because so many of them are fearful of stepping out. They're fearful of the backlash. And I'm not even... Hey y'all, this is Bakari. Um, hey. The way I feel, I'm gonna go back into a couple things that y'all already talked about. Um, I'm gonna answer this question first about the church. Um, I believe that the church is uh, too concerned with the pockets, the money aspect of things, and trying to. Uh, hold on to membership, then to get into a lot of the controversial pieces that uh, really affect the members. Um, you've got some pastors that, that are always controversial in, in, in news and things like that, when it comes to things like this, but you don't have that many that come out. Um, and to go back to uh, the previous question, um, when it comes to uh, racism in the Bible, um, it, it's not necessarily racism, but prejudice. You know, and a lot of that, I mean, Leslie had this conversation earlier. I was like, you know, a lot of people get the word wrong. You know, they, they combine racism with everything. It's really not the truth, you know. Um, but when it comes to racism, in the Bible, or prejudice in the Bible, when you look at, uh, like Clark said, uh, the Egyptians and how uh, how they held back on the Israelites, um, and and even in the Bible, the Israelites fight fight uh, the Palest the Palestines and all kinds of other people. And those wars are still going on to this day, and so you know it, it's really a cycle. You know, we live in cycles, even with the racism, with the church, the whole nine. You know, the church was involved at one point, but it wasn't involved at one point. And so we continue to hit these cycles that we can't break out of. Um, and, and that that's in our own in our own lives. You know, like Leslie was talking about, you know, one of the biggest ways to hit people is is in their pockets and we've talked about this on many many occasions over the years and black people band together for a small period of time but then we go back to what we like you know regardless whether it made any 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 effect or anything like that um but we continue to stay in these cycles and you know we, we just can't get out of it And that's why I think, like, I agree. I totally agree with what you're saying, Bakari. That's why I feel like the whole society basis of the breakdown comes in the heavy conversation. 
And I agree with you on that. And that's kind of why I chose this subject, because it's something that needs to be talked about. And I, in no way, shape, form, or fashion, want to be part of anything controversial or whatever, you know, but I feel like you do. Conversations need to be had. That's the only way you you kick down doors and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? You 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 talk, you educate your people, you share your experiences of things like that. You know, because truth of the matter is things have changed. Laws have been enacted, but at the end of the day, you see the same thing. And I also, in no way, shape, form, or fashion, want to just make this about Black people. Because, I mean, let's face it, there are other people that are discriminated against. I don't want to leave them out. But it just happens to be when it comes to, like, brutality and stuff like that. You know, we are the people that it seems to affect most, you know. And, and even though we don't have any direct link or ties to those people who things like that have happened to, it does affect us just because of the color of our skin, unfortunately, you know, and it's like, who's to say that it won't be my child next or somebody I know close to my family or something like that. Who's to say, you know, and a lot of people think that just because we live in Anderson and, you know, we're here and things seem to be okay. No, that kind of stuff can happen anywhere, you know, Does anybody have any input, any insight, any thing they want to share? I mean, anything. Well, it's most definitely, an <laughs> you can ask, uh, well, Clark done left because he had to go to work, but how many times that we got pulled over when we used to ride together, especially in my car that had tinted windows? And we mm -hmm. got pulled over, I mean, silly reasons. Like one was my mm -hmm. lights were too dim, or one that, uh, the cop asked, did we have any bootlegs? And one time mm -hmm. we got pulled over by a bunch of cops at leaving a shine house outside of a, what's that video, on um, that video rental place? All because, you know, three black guys. Just just wrong, black yeah, you were just wrong black. color. Exactly. So it ain't, it, Anderson is just big on it oh, yeah. anywhere else, believe me. So. I mean, even as a female, it's happened to me. When I worked for Hertz and Anderson, we used to transport cars back and forth from Anderson to Livonia because we had a location in Livonia. And I mean, it was a rental car business. So we had nice, I mean, we had nice cars. It was three of us in separate cars going to Livonia. Well, stop. Why did I get stopped? I, to this day, have no clue. I have no clue. All he asked me for was my license and what are you doing? And the only thing I could do is hand him my license and a business card. And he let me go. What's crazy is one time we got let go just because we had our Bible. We was coming from church. We had our Bible sitting in the car. He saw the Bible and so he let us go. Yep. And one time when me and Pete got pulled up, <laughs> we had our Evergreen shirts so, on. Uh, he, Pete had his clips I had on and he let us go. So it was, it's like, you know, they see you color, the color of your skin first before anything else. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. But again, that that is nothing to do with us, I feel like, as individuals. It's the person who feels that way. I mean, they have to have a change of heart. I, and, and I don't feel like that's something that we can personally do per se, but we have to be the people that God has caused called us to be and live by his standards and let people see that and hopefully somehow evoke a change some kind of way. I don't know. I don't, I don't have the answers. It's like Tasha was saying, I just think having the conversation is, is something. You know, we were sitting here talking about this and, um, you know, a lot of what stemmed this whole conversation was uh, the George Floyd uh, case and, and you know, a lot of it doesn't, not necessarily racism, you know, some of it is just the fact that uh, people are scared for no, no apparent reason. You know, people are scared of black people. You know, um, they took a poll, and I don't know what the poll was, what, what uh, the thing was, but they had both black and white police officers, you know, and of course, you know, they all say, you know, they're not they're not afraid of us. 
But when they do a test, it comes to find out that all of them are, you know. And so, you know, it, it's it's the fact that we scare them to an to a point to where they feel like they have to get the drop on us before we get to drop on them. And I don't think that that I mean that's not right at all, you know. Um, and so, you know, like, like Leslie said, it's not just about black people and white people, you know, in, in this instance, you know, we've got racism, but we've also got other things that go on with it. So why do we have it? Why, do, why are uh, people naturally afraid of us? And why do they fear us to the point to where it comes down to things like this? That's a good question. Yeah, and that's not my can't answer. That's that has to come from that individual. I, I can't. Um, I do think. Um, I don't know. Just by me working in the school system and um, working with kids, like maybe just our race is just a little more aggressive though too like because even in the kids in the school system like and i try to i do treat each of them equally you know black white whatever color they are but i i expect my expectations are a little more out of the black kids and i don't know if that's wrong to think that and to have that expectation but that's my expectation for them because i know the struggle they have to grow up to face. So I, for them, I want them to automatically start seeing that they can be better than what the system has already got their mind frame set for them. You see what I'm saying? But like even young kids, like little kids in school, they just they just ready. They just a little more aggressive and like verbal in a negative way like automatically i think compared to some of the caucasian kids and hispanic kids in it in the school system i i see that from my standpoint so i don't know if maybe just we as african americans we just seem to be a little more aggressive compared to other races and other ethnicities I mean, I think that comes from years of oppression and yes. degradation and yes. struggle and heartache and tension and scraping. I think that has a lot to do with um, our history as a people. Um, we didn't want, you know, we didn't say we wanted to come here. We were brought here forcibly. So I think that comes from just that the struggle that we faced over generations and generations and a lot of people especially in the african-american community you know we do have to have those talks with our kids be respectful do this do that don't do this don't do that you know what i'm saying so i can understand um that aggressive, I don't know, I wouldn't necessarily say aggressive, but I do understand what you're saying. Um, yeah, maybe aggression wasn't the right word, but like just a little a more forthcoming. Yeah. I think it's pain. <laughs> years and years of pain. Mm -hmm. Passed down from Yeah, generation. I totally agree. Yeah. And it's in, is this in the bloodline? When you've been treated mm -hmm. a certain way for years and years, I mean, of course you're going to have resentment towards a certain right. people. So, so in asking, and everybody asking that, uh, answering that question, so we talk about racism and, and I, I hate to hear this, you know, when, uh, when black people always talk about racism, we always point it towards you know, other races are racist against us. But uh, 
I believe that we're racist against uh, uh, some of them as well. Do you all believe that same thing? No, I mean, no. No. Oh, I think prejudice, no. but not racist. Yeah. Being racist and prejudice is, is two different things because prejudice is prejudgment. So, yes. And I think that's something that we're all guilty of because I, I, I prejudge people. <laughs> I do have some prejudice. I'm not saying that they that they are that they're right. Um, but no, I don't I don't I don't think racist, no. Prejudice, yes. Because there's no class of people that I just hate because they're those people. But there are some people in those classes that I just really don't like. I think it really boils back down to individual people. I mean, I'm not, don't get me wrong, I'm not racist towards anybody. Like you said, I, I got some prejudices that, that go along with it. Um, but in in the black community, you, you do have people that are. Um, you can't tell me when you go down to uh, Crenshaw or Watts or places like that, that some of those people right there, they're not prejudiced or racist against some of them because at the end of the day, you know, it all it all depends upon how you have been treated at the same time. And in some areas, you know, I, I knew a couple of, of people that were straight up racist towards white people. Any other comments? I just feel like this whole thing is me personally. I just feel like it's not by God's design because he was loving, kind, compassionate, um, no respecter or person. It's something that was to me racism. It's it's man made. Um, it was created to set another group of people apart and make other people feel inferior. Um, I think it can get better than what it is um, if we put forth some effort, because I mean, like I said earlier, you can act all kind of laws and stuff that you want to, and that's good and all. But at the end of the day, people have their hearts and stuff have to change, because that's, that's, really, that's really the problem, I think. I, I do have a question. Courtney uh, mentioned something about this uh, a minute ago. So she mentioned, uh, you know, having a conversation with your kids on, uh, you know, how people treat you. A lot of us on here have kids. So what does that conversation look like? Because not everybody can have that conversation the way you want to have it with your kids. or they don't feel comfortable in having it. They don't know what to say. So what what does that conversation look like? Has anybody had that yeah. conversation with the kids? Yes. Yeah, I don't know how it goes, but it has to be done. Yeah. And what was that conversation like, Courtney, if you don't mind sharing? It was actually, honestly, it was one um, conversation I had with the girls this morning. Um, yesterday, I was watching some of the riots and looting and I was just overcome with emotions and Kayana walked in and she saw me crying and she's like mama what's wrong what's wrong and you know at the time I'm like nothing it's okay I'm I'm all right and um retrospect retrospect looking back I felt that I should have explained to her what was going on so I took the opportunity today to do that and ultimately, I told them um, there are some bad people. Yes, there are some bad cops. Yes, um, but ultimately, God is in control. and We don't have to live in fear, um, but you do have to be respectful. 
And that was a tough conversation to have because Kayana's first question was, well, what do we do to them for, uh, for them not to like us? And I couldn't answer that. I honestly couldn't answer that. And she just cried. It was hard, but it was necessary. Anybody else? I don't have kids of my own, so. I see Ashley on. Yes, I'm on, but say the truth, I really haven't had that conversation with my kids about okay. yet. Okay. So, like I said, I don't, I don't know how to introduce it. I don't know how to present it. So, I don't want to come at them to think of yeah. the wrong thing. Yeah. Conversation. Yeah, and that's definitely something you have to be ready and you have to be comfortable in the way that you do present it to them because you don't want to upset them. You know, it has to be the right time for you. Um. I can say that unfortunately, we've had to have that conversation with Micah. I think it was about two years ago. We were in Greenville Mall. I don't really remember what the circumstances was, but we were in Greenville Mall and it was a, a white man and his daughter or something, I think, walking in front of us. And it was just, I mean, we knew what it was about because they kept turning around looking. And I mean, I was with. Micah, you know, and it was just odd, just strange or whatever, you know, and afterwards, I just have to tell Micah, there are some people that are going to look at you in a certain way just because of the color of your skin. They don't care how you speak when you open your mouth. They're not going to even give you the opportunity to open your, your mouth and speak and show them how intellectual you are, but based off your skin, they're going to judge you. You know, wasn't a conversation that we wanted to have his feelings was hurt because he was crying or whatever. He's like, what did I do? I didn't do nothing. You don't have to do anything. Um, we have to remind him too. He's a kid that likes wearing hoodies. Can't wear a hoodie after dark. <laughs> you know, it's just certain conversations that you that you have to unfortunately have with them um, in the right time for yourself, unfortunately, at a young age. You know, I mean, uh, these conversations and even the stuff that we talk about is not meant to to sway them in any kind of way because you don't want to create the no. same thing that's going on right now. No. At the end of the All day, right. you want to show the positive and the negative. You know, yeah, you got people out here that are certain ways and, you know, even the people that's supposed to protect you don't necessarily protect you in the way you do have good ones out there and i think as parents as individuals as churchgoers we have to show both sides of it. the mm -hmm. you know we have to show the good cops as well as what we see on tv you know um we have to show you know uh the caucasians that we love as well as the ones that you know are are against us you know and you have to show them those things together um, and it, it's hard but you know i think that's something you know we just all have to do one of the things i wanted to do and we, we were talking about this today was trying to bring on a, a, one of our cop friends to actually join in on a conversation with us today um but it, it didn't happen but you know at the end of the day i also i do want to introduce them to my boards because I want them to understand that there are good ones out there outside of the ones you see on TV. Because if we let it, the media will continue to control our minds and, and, and kind of sway us into this negative connotation of people that we don't want to we don't want to have. We don't want to start up a new, a new cycle of right. people that are having that same conversation that we're having. All right. And it was a tough conversation. It was 
um, extremely difficult to see, you know, Kayana upset um, just because of her skin color. But I had to remind her that, you know, God is love and Mm -hmm. he wants us to love everybody, even those who mistreat us, even though we, you know, it's hard to sometimes. And I, I was honest, like I said, mommy don't get it right every day, but we have to strive to love. And when we have God's love, there is no fear. God's perfect mm-hmm. love casts out fear. And that's what I had to end it with because I didn't want to leave them with, you know, people don't like you because of how you look. Um, but we end it with God is in, he's sovereign and he's in control. And that's, you know, that's how we, we have to like, especially now, like we have to instill the word in the kids. Like these kids that are looting and rioting, they have no direction. Like it's, it's so sad. It's so disheartening because all they see and not all of them, but most of them is an opportunity. Right. And they need direction. And we have to give our kids the word so they can be, the word can be aligned to their feet. Well, and they need to know who they are in God's eye. Right. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's the true. thing. No one, don't, don't let don't let your own thoughts of yourself define you. Don't let the thoughts of others define you. Let what the word of God says about you define you so that when those thrones or those stones are thrown at you for being whatever color it is that you are, it's going to hurt, but they won't penetrate and hurt as bad when you are deeply rooted in the word of God and know who you are. All right. Yeah, I will say... Um... Me and V, you know, we've had a conversation with, you know, Adam. He's uh, he's in school now, but we, we've always told him that, you know, because of your race, you're going to be looked at different. Uh, you have to present yourself. You don't have to present yourself, but you're, you're going to be seen in a different light. So how you behave is, uh, is going to be magnified, I guess you could say, a little bit. Uh, bigger than you know your counterparts so what we always tell them the word of god goes beyond race Mm -hmm. sin problem so you know those folks that have that problem you know that's a problem that they have but all we can do all you can do you know this child him all he can do is just do the right thing try his best to do the right thing if he does something wrong and it's going to happen you know, mom and daddy there, and we're going to scare the rest right now, you know, because that's, that's the position we're in. But, you know, I was in that position. I was in the, uh, you know, what, what you call it when you do that uh, thing when you're in school and you go walk in front of people with clothes on and stuff. What you call it? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, uh, it's a little modeling thing in high school. Oh, that's so. You know, we had to wear different clothes and stuff. You know, I had different, uh, you know, I can't, I was the only black one in there. Mm. And as soon as I walked in, they said, oh, no, we got a blank coming in. You know, he going to win because they feel sorry for him, you know. So wow. I was like, oh, boy, here we go. You know, and I had to put on a, you know, a smile. I was mad. I was sad and I didn't understand. But, you know. Still, you know, racism is here and it's in our face. And we we can't we can't do anything about it, but we we just have to stand on the word of God. That's all we can do. Because God has to be the one to change the heart. Jesus right. Christ is the only one that can change the heart of man. And right. you know, if if they don't have Christ, you know, some some folks come out of racism. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it has but you mm-hmm. gotta have Jesus, and uh, if you if they don't, you know that's what we tell them. You know, they could be a Christian, they could be, you know, uh, just some white folk don't like you coming in their church. Some black people don't like. But Carl was telling the truth. There are some racist black people. 
we've had black people in our history that didn't like other black people because of uh, the lightness in their skin tone, because they could pass. You know, they could get away. Yeah. Family in our own family, they moved up north because they could pass up the north. You know, they thought that they, you know, they, they were pretty close to, to our white brothers and sisters. So it happens in our own race. Even Africans that come over here, they see us as a a lesser than they are. So it's everywhere. That sin, sin mentality that sees all of us. And the only one that can take care of it is Jesus. So that's what we, that's what we preach to them all the time. Jesus, the word of God, it, he's got to be in you to do any kind of change. Yeah. And as far as why people don't like you, they hated Jesus for no reason. Jesus was right. healing people. Jesus was, right. I mean, he didn't do nothing. So if, if they can hate Jesus, who was one of the most innocent human beings at that time, he was, you know, half woman and he was in the flesh. Oh, God. Oh, me. Oh, me. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay, well, you know what I mean. And he was the most innocent <laughs> um, ever who walked the earth and they were they they crucified him for no right. reason crucified him so that is just like human it's it's human, in human nature. nature i mean that it's just that simple thing that's that's just that sin that's why we got to have Christ because if not that's what happens he will be you they act that way the flesh take over so mm -hmm. that's I tell everybody, like, hey, they hated Jesus for no reason. So people just gonna be that way. I mean, I had a black girl who said she just didn't like me. She cut her eyes at me, everything in high school. I asked her, I was like, why you don't, why you don't like me? She said, mm. she, I mean, she couldn't answer. So that made me feel good because I was like, I knew I hadn't did anything to her. She just don't like me. I said, she hating. She jealous. That's what I looked at it as. But yeah, she would not speak for me or nothing for no reason. I hadn't been anything to her i was just in honors classes and stuff and then she was so i figured maybe that was why but old man amen but well i mean i hope something was said that each of us can take to, I don't know, make us better people, feel comfortable about having conversations with our kids or make us think about what we can contribute to making things change. Again, at the end of the day, like Peter just said, it has to, the change has to occur in the person's heart. But I would like to hope that Jesus working in and through me and people seeing that would be something for people to see in me to make them have a heart change or, or, or you know, it, it's the way you live your life. Like Peter was kind of saying, you know, them telling Adam, you know, to me, you set the standard of how people treat you. People already have a standard for you. You can even either live up to it or down to it, however you want to look at it. So I feel like you set the standard of how people treat you and, and, we should all just desire to live like God's word tells us to and be light. That's all I can say. And hopefully in just doing that, somebody seeing that light, you know, it'll be something that will prick their heart and make them examine themselves in some way. But um, I also agree with what Tasha said. I think there are certain conversations that need to be had um, and this, I feel like, is is one. Um, I don't have anything else. If anybody else has anything else, Amen. Well, if that is it, is anybody on the line willing to pray us out? You got it. Nobody else is jumping on. Go ahead. All right, I'm going to do it, y'all. Bow your head. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this time together, Lord. Thank you for your word, your wisdom, and your grace, Lord. Um, 
we thank you for showing us, giving us some insight and allowing us to see new things that we may not have thought about, Lord. Well, we ask that you come into our hearts and help someone else, Lord. Uh, allow this word to, to simmer in us, Lord, and take back to our families, to our communities, to our friends, um, and maybe be able to help them, Lord. Uh, let this conversation continue to go across the whole nation, Lord, not just in this, this group here, Lord, but with everybody, Lord. Uh, continue to watch over us, Lord. Continue to be with us, Lord. In your wonderful blessing, name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.